Hey guys, so today we're taking a virtual trip to the coffee shop and I'm really excited. Let's get started on this fun and cozy painting. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me. This is Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and this drawing was done live on our 14 hour marathon. It's broken into two videos and it will be listed up above in the more information, well, it is listed down below in the more information. It will be listed up above in the iCard. And I do have a uh, couple things first. We do have the all of the drawings available for instant download so that you can print them off. You can print them off on whatever paper you want to use. See, I've got, uh, my pages got mixed up in this download version. This is what we're doing today. Monday is going to be the sunflower. Pretty, huh? And then Tuesday will be the cat. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to doing that kitty cat. So stick with me if you want to paint along. It's a digital download, instant download, and it's a really great way to support my channel if you're interested in helping support my studio. This is on Teespring. It's linked over in the chat and down below in the more information box. If you don't want to print and choose what paper you print on because that's the cool thing when you get the download you can choose what paper you print on so you can print on watercolor paper or cardstock or whatever if you don't have a printer and you still want the images 30 cozy creative designs is a coloring book with you know you can trace these designs off use a little light box or something trace these off you can cut them out of the book and use them uh, however you want to do whatever you want to do with a coloring book you can do it so there we go thank you guys so much you love the cat too yeah the cat's gonna be really fun I I don't do a lot of living things and so that's going to be a big learning experience for me also this one we have uh, I have edited this picture when I drew it I edited the picture and what I mean by that is that the reference for this picture is this there's a whole blanket and stuff that was around here behind the book there was another tablet um, you know underneath of the post-it notes just you know little things like that but I want you to see you can take this to the coffee shop instead of sitting on your bed right so we're sitting at a counter with a window giving us the light um, in the reference picture there is light coming through this way there you can see the reflection of curtains in the uh, coffee cup there so we're going to be playing with that glowy Coey, welcome looking forward to it thank you so much it's lovely to see new people coming in I appreciate that so so very much now because our background is windows here, I'm going to say that in my windows, because I like that warm glow of, you know, soft light coming through the windows, we're going to kind of paint in water just in the windows. I'm going to grab the, this is the, that fan palette from Amazon it's really cheap watercolors but they're actually surprisingly good and surprisingly light fast except for anything that's purple and the magenta um, anything that's purple and the magenta tend to fade over time if you are putting them in to frames and hanging them on your wall but we're doing cards and I'm doing illustrations that I'm taking pictures of and then sharing those on different uh, different products and things like that so I don't mind if the colors are a little not light fast because it's okay and if you're working in your in a watercolor sketchbook or watercolor paper um, notebook or something like that you don't have to worry about it it's going to not be getting the light um, that light is not going to be affecting your paintings right because they're going to be inside and if you're doing it straight onto a card you're giving it to someone as a card they are going to 
to keep it, maybe put it up for a little while. Then they'll probably toss it into a box of mementos because, hey, you know, when you have things that are handmade for you, you tend to save them, right? Hassie Jan, thank you. Welcome. Mike, you bought that. It arrived today. The, the watercolor palette. Yeah, it is so much fun to just color with it. And my suggestion, first thing you do is make yourself like a color swatch. And the Frugal Crafter showed how to do a color swatch where she took strips of watercolor paper and put the colors on in the strips and then did another strip so that they matched. I've got a couple of those floating around here somewhere that I made for myself. But, you know, it's um, just just the way just the way this goes. Uh, there's lots of ways to blend your watercolors. And right here, I don't mind if I get a little bit of green showing up. I'm thinking that there's like bushes and stuff outside these windows. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this sort of phthalo blue color show you right there that sort of phthalo blue and I'm going to put it around the outside and then let it blend in you see where the watercolor was wet it's blending in and it's making a green color right so now it feels like I might have some little bushes back here where the paper was dry it's just going to be blue where the paper is wet it's going to turn yellow wherever I put that color and I'm letting it blend in, giving it the opportunity to just, just mix. We're going to do that again. I'm going to come over here with a little bit of that blue. This might be a second story window in a one of those really fancy coffee shops, you know, that has upstairs and downstairs. The yellow is my light. It's kind of glowing through the window. So see? And then I'm just going to come over this way. Maybe my color is a little bit fainter. You know, I'm not looking out that window straight out. You follow these watercolor videos, they're great. You'll buy the palette. Hey, you know, um, I have a link down below in the more information for my Amazon store. So if you happen to buy the buy it on Amazon, I do earn a small commission. And uh, the paper is the Hanamula Bamboo on this one. So it's the Hanamula Bamboo Mixed Media Paper. So it is 90% bamboo and 10% cotton. And this watercolor lifts, so I'm not worried about getting that watercolor down inside my window frame. Part of it is there will be some reflections anyway. A little bit more of that blue right in that corner. And I just got the water, or just got that yellow wet again to let that sort of bleed and mix. Isn't that fun? I am going to say that this, these window frames are going to be very dark brown. And the tabletop uh, is going to be a warm brown. The cup, I think we're going to put a little pattern on the cup. Just because it's nice to have a pattern. And I am, so I'm thinking about what kind of a pattern I want to put on that cup. So help me think that, that one through, guys. What kind of a pattern do we want on that cup? And as we're waiting on that, I'm going to put a soft, creamy yellow on the paper. I imagine my art different from other artists. You know, um, I think that's one of the wonderful things about art is that we can take a we can take a reference like this and we don't have to draw exactly that reference we can look at it and get inspired to do something i'm going to leave my pages blank because i want to leave room for the person who's doing the artwork they can write words in they can draw 
little doodles and pictures on. I am going to make these fun, colorful glasses. But first off, I want to uh, just get this lightly colored in. Oh, well, healing thoughts for you, Miss Shauna. Oral surgery is always a uh, challenge. <laughs> it's always a challenge. Flowers or dots? Yeah, yeah, flowers or dots. I'm thinking maybe a little, a, a delicate flower pattern. I kind of like that. The uh, pattern on the, on the actual cup is, it's sort of a teal blue cup with, I think that it actually says some words right in the, um, in this area. I think that it says words. I'm not putting words. I'll just put pretty flowers. And guys, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And if you want to share your appreciation with me, click that like button because that really shares your appreciation of this artwork and it shows YouTube that people like it. <laughs> <laughs> so I have had oral surgery before I had all of my wisdom teeth extracted two different two different um, uh, appointments with you know a few weeks between and uh, luckily my wisdom teeth were like really tiny and um, not only one was impacted meaning that it was attached to the bone um so did pretty well for that. I like up here, look at this, how it looks like little bushes and stuff outside the window. And we didn't have to do a lot of work on it. I am going to go ahead and get the color going down on my pages so it can dry and not dry, but it, it can uh, blend the color. And so that way, after I get these on, I can let them dry and draw the pattern in on the cup. And this is a colorful post-it note pad. We all have post-it notes floating around. Some of us have ones that are like super pretty colors. Some of us have ones that are the standard office supply yellow. Now, I want this to be kind of a natural color on that on those pages. You notice I'm just painting right over the top of my ink. This is the original artwork. And if you want to know, the pen that I use to draw the original artwork is this inexpensive. Uh, it's a rollerball tip. It has the 0.38 inch. The ink is really nice and black, and it dries waterproof. It is Eco Pen, E C O Pen. I do have it linked down below in my more information. Um, Amazon goes in and out of it. So sometimes it's in stock and sometimes it's not. You just have to kind of take a, take a uh, shot to get that. Uh, my favorite art supplies, I'm a pen and ink artist. I love pen and ink, but I also really like watercolor wash on my pen and ink. So I'm going to take a little bit of this sort of yellow ochre color and get a lot of water in it because I'm just going to make my pages in my book sort of a toned tan, which means that I need to pick up a little bit of a brown into my yellow. Look at that. little more yellow and this is I'm saying this is kind of the yellow ochre color this is sort of a burnt sienna color so yeah and I don't mind using inexpensive art supplies if they get the job done you know so yeah thank you I am now my pages are damp and I'm taking a extra amount of water on my brush so I this might end up being a little bit more like a craft paper color. Sort of that brown, the, the toned brown pages. Which is nice because it makes it feel a little bit more like it's a sketchbook. And like I said, I'm not going to actually draw anything on the pages of this book. 
And the reason why is I want to leave room for you guys to make your own decisions sometimes, you know? Um, you can put yourself into this. You can put your own take on what kind of a book this is. Maybe it's a journal. Maybe you're writing in your journal. Maybe you're doing your morning pages in your journal. And this is in front of the window. You know, this is, it's just going on so nice and easy here. I am, see how I put a little bit more concentrated color right underneath of the pencil or pen? You could make this into a pencil. It doesn't have to stay as a pen. I kind of drew my favorite pen, didn't I? It's kind of like, kind of like this one. Just because, you know? Um, I'm sort of painting around the glasses. It doesn't really matter if I get the paint on them. But I do want the color of the paper showing up behind. And we are going to work some shadow from the glasses behind. There will be a little bit of gouache to give some highlight on the glasses, I think. Hey, Harlan, welcome! Oatmeal cookies! Ooh! Oh, Hasi, no problem. The, I, uh, I like all art supplies, really. But my favorite pen and ink, right now my favorite tool to use is this Eco Pen. I have, it comes in a tube. I mean, that's how, it, it comes in a cardboard tube, no plastic packaging. And that is 20 pens waiting for me to use. So, I've got a bunch. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, there we go. We're getting the color of the pages in. We'll be adding more color as we go along. I just want this paper to be sort of toned. I'm going to grab some more of that. My, um, let's move that reference up. My uh, board that I'm working on is a piece of corrugated plastic board. It's called Coroplast. I do have that linked in my Amazon shop also. Like I said, it's a way to support my, support my shop. I will be using some of the Arteza gouache. Oh, and the um, Arteza cotton watercolor cards are back in stock, guys. So I just got noticed this morning that they're back in stock. So if you were looking for the Arteza watercolor cards, that is... Whoops these guys that I did all of my um, December painting on these are back in stock so uh, if you wanted them check them out these are my favorite watercolor cards to work on so Hasi if you were wondering this is my favorite watercolor paper cards because they're 100% cotton cold press paper and they are great for all watercolor and mixed media. I do have a discount code for Arteza right now. So um, you can get an additional 10% off the um, whatever the price is for sale. And just put in Deliberately Creative 15 right now. But the, the code is listed down below in the more information. So I just I wanted to make sure that I said that because... And they're not paying me for this. They're not sponsoring my video or anything like that. I just love those cards. Let's see here. So a little bit of shadow going on there on the paper. I'm going to put a little bit of some shadow going in here under the glasses. The paper is kind of dried, but not really dry. So, a general shadow. It doesn't have to be perfect. Look at that. I can even put a little bit of a shadow down here and maybe a little bit underneath in these pages. Ooh, look at that. I just touched it and it went whoosh and worked its way down in. Oh, I like that. This is coming together really, really nicely. Now, your pages are arched, so there will be a bit of a higher highlight and in the center here it will be shadowed a little bit because it's coming down and away from the, the window but this side 
there will be a little bit more light and that outside edge will have more of a shadow as it's going down and away. And my page is going off the edge of the paper. It is taped down all the way around so we'll have that nice white edge. So, bye. Bye, Hossie John. Thank you. Or Hossie Jan. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you're here. And I'm glad that you're uh, getting out and doing something too. So thank you for coming. Remember, doing creative stuff is important. It rebuilds our... Actually, doing something creative helps to build your immune system because it releases positive um, hormones in your brain. So I'm just taking some more of that darker, a little bit more concentrated version and putting it along the edge. We're moving along on that, aren't we? I'm going to let that dry sort of smooth after I smooth out that little spot. <laughs> you know, you kind of do that. You, I look at this and go, oh, I'm going to let that dry. And then I go, oops, I wanted to put more color on there. That's fun. That's fun. Now, remember to click that like button. If you have to go out or if you just came in, click the like button and let me know if you are enjoying going to the coffee shop virtually today. Next month, my goal is I'm probably going to be just listing a generic, you know, come draw with me, come paint with me. Um, so that way, it's just going to be time in the studio, and I'm going to do whatever sort of hits my fancy that day. Um, I want to be a little bit more freeform. It might not be live every single day in February because it's my husband's birthday in that month, and we are talking about maybe taking a little mini break where there might not be a um, live video go up. I might have some dropped videos here and there. I don't know. You know, it's it's all just, it's free form. We don't know for sure. We're kind of playing it by ear. We might take the van out and uh, go find some place and just camp over a couple days. You miss the, you miss the, the uh, coffee shop and now it's the pickup window. Yeah. Yeah, so I do have a a local, you know, Starbucks. I can walk down to it. I can, you know, but I haven't. I haven't. Um, and I can use the, you know, the Starbucks app and I can order it pre-order. So that way when I get there, all I have to do is walk up to the counter, pick up my food, my uh, coffee and walk out. But, you know, I don't, I don't do that very often. I'm just putting a little bit more color back here in these pages. Just sort of saying that there's some shadow and light. I'm not sure if this, this might be a paperback, so we can't even see what color the cover is. I want to dry this so that way we can move on and I don't put my hand in the paint. <laughs> Ah, Kathy, your birthday is Monday the 1st. Oh, wow. Well, you get a sunflower bundle for your birthday. Annabelle, your birthday is February 12th. And Lincoln's birthday. My husband's birthday is Washington's birthday. So February 22nd is his birthday. So when we were kids, he got his birthday off every year. But then it just, you know, got made into the one, you know, President's Day instead of celebrating all of the presidents on their individual birthdays. So, yeah, there we go. Coffee cup doodle. I just didn't want to put my hand in the paint. So I'm going to move this little guy down and make it smaller because for right now we don't really need it. I want to zoom in on that cup. 
we're going to do a doodle on the cup and some type of a doodle on the little plate also. And I think I'm going to pencil in Aussie Banana. Yours is February 24th. My goodness, we've got a lot of, um, let's see, Pisces and Capricorn coming in here. Wow. Yeah, mine isn't until May, so we've got, I've got some time on mine. I'm just putting that little line in there just so that I know where my, my actual coffee is going to be. And let's see. So maybe we will do this with a flower pattern that's got circle dot centers and we have it going around the cup. And then I'm going to put a circle around each one of these. This is just so I know where my petals are and I can keep them kind of symmetrical, kind of, you know, I'm not going to ink these circles. These are, it looks like donuts. <laughs> it looks like donuts are going on there. I'm going to put another, another row sort of offset down below. Oh, that could be a fun pattern, but I'm not going to do donuts. I'm going to do flowers, but this just gives me the outside shape. And I think I'm going to do them kind of like, am I up to making birthday card tutorials? Well, you know, the cool thing is any of these designs could be used for birthday cards. <laughs> So any of these cozy designs could be a birthday card. I am looking at doing some, maybe some cute, cute art that we could like use for kids, I guess, or people who like, um, you know, my brain just went dead. Cute art. For, that you could use for kid cards, I guess. I'm going to put little petals in the background. See how I just... Very basic. Very basic. We don't have to... We don't have to do super, super detailed stuff, right? Because... Look. That's all it takes. Putting a little line down the center and a dot just lifts that up from being a kindergarten art to a grown-up doodle. <laughs> Moonlight McCall, six days before yours. And Aussie Banana, your daughter is in August also. Oh, wow. Yeah, lots of February birthdays. I'm excited about that. Yours is in August, Moonlight. My, uh... My, uh, I, one of my brothers, or my brothers, one of my siblings, my brother, his birthday is in August. My dad is in January. My husband's in February. My mom is in March. My sister and her husband, are, one of my sisters and her husband is in April. Oh, one of my sister's husbands is in March. I'm in May. And now I'm not even going down to my, my nieces and, you know, other, <laughs> other people. This is just, you know, kind of my parents in my level. Um, you know, so we've got, and then when you start adding the nieces and my, my son and yeah, we, we have almost every month covered. I think I think we don't have anybody in June. If I'm right. I don't think we have anybody in June, which is really weird even when you get down to the the nieces. I don't have any nephews. It's really weird, but my son was the only 
the only boy in that generation. And then he has two sons. So kind of cool. Um, you know, the family name will, my, my husband's family name will go on. My brother isn't interested in having any kids. So, you know, we just, the, that side of the family name, because my dad's identical twin had all girls. My dad had all girls. So it kind of, the carrying on of the family name is in um, in the outside lines of our family now. My uh, cousins, my, we found some cousins that live in um, the Midwest that still have the same uh, surna surname as my dad. So the family is still going to keep going. I have uh, four siblings, and we all live in the same state. I'm closest to my uh, closest siblings, my, my sisters, that are the first three of us kids were born within two and a half years, so or a little over two and a half years, but still under three years for um, the first three of us. So, you know, that was back in the day when they told you you couldn't get pregnant if you were nursing a baby. Uh, that's a load of malarkey. I'm just putting some leaves in, just sort of randomly filling space. Just because I like to doodle. I'm, I'm working on a, um, like, overall patterns type of doodle coloring book. So... That's something that's in the work. It's probably going to be a doodle, a doodle coloring book where one side will be the coloring book page and one side will be dot grid or lines. So I have a question for you guys. If you had a coloring, coloring book, and the reason for doing that is so the back side of the page, so when you color on this page over here, when you flip it over, this is the back side of it. You can write with your pencils and stuff like that, and it's not going to come through your colored page. And that way you don't have um, coloring sheets that are backing each other. That way you don't have to decide, which one am I going to color? But if you, um, if you had a choice, would you want the light dot grid on the back of the page like this? Or would you rather have lines? I kind of like the dot grid for me because it doesn't show through on the artwork on the front side of the page because I do a light dot, dot grid, but it still gives you that place where you can have lines. Let me know. Leave me a comment in the comment section if you uh, have a, a, a preference on that. I am going to go ahead and put tinier flowers going around the plate. They're going to be much tinier. And Brandy, yours is, your birthday is in June. I love how everybody has, you know, everybody's got a birthday, you know? We all have birthdays. I'm just erasing the pencil line while I'm thinking about it off of the cup. This is just a kneaded eraser. Actually, it's about three kneaded erasers pushed, pushed together. And if you're looking for something to have as a, like a worry stone type of thing or a worry um, fidget, get some kneaded, soft kneaded erasers. This makes one of the best fidgets ever. So that's, a, that's an artist studio tip. Get yourself some kneaded erasers, mush them together, get it so that it fits in your hand, and it makes a great fidget. <laughs> ah, thank you guys so much for being here. So I'm going to go ahead and just put my little petals on. I'm doing five petals going around, and because I've made these so many times, 
I'm pretty good at spacing. You know, if I told myself I wanted more petals, I can do it. Five petals just works really well. I'm kind of pointing my petals a little bit. Just pretty little flowers. What I'm going to do to paint this in, I think I like the sort of teal blue background. So I'm gonna go with a teal blue background. It's going to be darker towards the outside of the rim and it's gonna be a little bit lighter in the middle. And then we'll drop some probably pink on the flowers. Just because I, so I like that little color combination. I will go back and put the little, those little center crease lines. I mean, this is, this is fun, basic doodling. It gives, it gives your brain a, a break. Let's see. I think there might just be a little bit of a petal showing right there under the edge of the book. You know, it's not, I didn't line this out with a compass. I didn't draw this out perfectly. These are just sweet little flowers, little petals, and they are doodles. And if you want to make little geometric shapes or you just want to put a stripe around the saucer, that works too. Fun. Little tiny lines. Now, this pen tip is awesome for your middle size type doodles getting any smaller than these flowers and the tip is a little bit big you would maybe want to go to a point two point two five if you could find it or to a micron um point zero one <laughs> You normally miss the lives, but thanks to insomnia, you finally caught one. Ah, Aussie banana. So it's early morning for you then. Really early. Because I'm guessing from Aussie banana, you're in Oz. <laughs> Which is good. Which is good. I love that our, our audience is worldwide. I think... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do... A little swirl and it's going to be random this is just filling in some space And there might be some little leaves on it. <laughs> you know, the cool thing is, it's that it can just stay black line work. You don't have to, you don't have to paint all the fiddly little bits in. And that's another thing with having a doodle. You get to decide what you're going to color and what you're not. And you don't have to color doodles. Many people do them and they are just plain doodles. Three thirty AM. Oh, you must be in the Oh, Western Australia. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely early morning. <laughs> the doodles are a great addiction. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting my my next coloring book done with doodles. But I'm also working on the coloring book of little houses. So I've got a couple things going on. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to zoom out just so we can get a better view of the whole thing. So that's looking pretty good, isn't it? I want to go in and get the brown color put in on the uh, on the window frames. Or maybe I'll keep it white and we'll put shadow in. Uh, you know, I like the, the white uh, white on those shadows 
or white on the uh, window sills. So what I'm gonna do, look at that. I'm just gonna go like this. I'm softening up that color that's there. This paper, the bamboo mixed media paper and this paint, watch what happens here. Let me zoom in before I, so see, I'm softening up that paint softening up those pigments just in the windowsill just in the windowsill and what I'm going to do we're going to take a dry paper towel and we're just going to blot see how it's not that harsh harsh line anymore Canada is huge I want to go and do like a couple months in Canada, which is going to take um, a couple years before we get to do that. But we've got the van so we can have our lodgings. We've got uh, and, and our ability to cook and things like that because Canada is huge. There's a lot of things to see, but there's a lot of room between places that you want to see. Right? So, see? I'm just cleaning up those windowsills, and if there's a little bit of color left, it's okay, because there's going to be a little bit of some shadow and reflection. I'm saying there's light coming through the window, but it might not be direct. So there might be some cast shadows. Don't rub your paper. Just, it, it sounded like I was rubbing, but I just draw, I sort of slid forward when I was putting that on. The, the paper kind of, the paper towel sort of sounded like it slid forward. So yeah, we've got a, a camper van that is really nice because it is, it's a minimal kind of conversion done to it to make it a camper. Hello, Miss Amy. Cute Amy is in the room. <laughs> All right. So now I want to get those window sills or window frames. Look at that. Ooh, that's making kind of a pretty color. I think that the facing of the window frame is going to get some color, but the inside the window itself is going to be brighter. So I'm getting the fr facings, the window frames, I'm getting them wet. I'm not worried if I get a little bit of that um, gray sort of coming in from the paint. This is going to be ever so slightly colored with some Prussian blue. It's making our window frames a little bit shadow. Doesn't have to be colored in perfect. It can have some variation in it because we're saying it's shadow, not paint. So you want it to be soft. I'm not sure what color the table is yet. Maybe we'll do a really dark brown for the table. That's what we'll do. You know, we're sitting at the coffee shop, right? We're sitting at the coffee shop. We're enjoying a fancy cup of coffee. In, or tea, whatever you want to put in the cup is what you put in the cup. I'm going to put a little bit of a darker shadow sort of in the corner. But I'm going to let light shine. What's happening is I'm saying the light is kind of coming from this angle right here, coming across. And the window frame itself would be causing a little bit of a shadow right here in the corner for the angle that I'm saying the sun is coming. I'm making it up. You can make it up too. 
<laughs> so that would mean that this part, the tall part right here, would be the brightest, right? And maybe I'll even pull that shadow a little bit farther over. Let it break a bit. Down here, uh, where it meets the table, I'm going to say is probably a little bit darker. But there's light in the room, too. You know, coffee shops have interesting lighting. So some of them are very atmospheric. You get those soft golden yellow type light. Some of them let a lot of the natural daylight do their lighting during the day. That was your tea. When you were a kid, your parents got you a tea set, put warm water and sugar in your teapot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's, I think that, that is most kids tea the first time they make tea. Because who wants that brown bitter stuff, right? When you're a kid, I'm just taking a little bit darker really close, tight in to those window sills, window frames, and then let it sort of draw out just a bit. That is fun. There is light in the room, so the window frames, even though they're um, in shadow a bit down here at the um, edge of the counter, they get lighter as they go up. In your cup is Pepsi Zero. <laughs> well, it looks like tea, right? It's that, you know, and if you let it sit there for a minute, it gets flat. <laughs> so it is 1147 AM on Friday, the 29th for me. I love how we're time travelers here, guys. We've got people that it's 3.47 in the morning. We've got people that it is, you know, 1.30 in the, or 1.47, 1.48 in the afternoon. Uh, we have people at all the different time zones. And when you come in, welcome. I am so glad that you're here, you know. And click that like button. That really tells YouTube that you like what you're watching. It's also a really big help to me. It helps me out knowing what content you guys like to do. So it's 11. Yeah, because Linda's on on the uh, West Coast with me, <laughs> which is nice. It's nice. I'm going to go in and start putting the color on the table and I'm going to work carefully around my cup because I'm going to be putting a dark brown. I want a dark. I want a rich kind of dark walnut brown but it's probably going to be more of a solid dark brown. We're not really going to be seeing the shadows from the book. The darker you make your, your surface, the less you're going to see those shadows. And I'm being kind of careful. I'm going up on the tip of my brush and just filling it in with water around because your paint will go wherever the paper is wet, it will flow around, but it won't go where the paper is dry as easily. And that's uh, because of the surface tension of the paper. You release the surface tension when you put water on it, but it's dry. So it's really tight and doesn't absorb the water or absorb the pigment in a whoosh across only in the wet areas and I want to get some of those areas Ooh, that one got a little bit more wet than I was expecting there we go <laughs> I got a new Fitbit because my old one after three years finally died and this one is set up to tell me that I need to get up and move but <laughs> I forgot to tell it not during the shows so it just went buzz buzz on my wrist there. See, because I had put too much water down, I can just pick it up with my brush. Just go like this. Your brush tip becomes like a sponge as it releases water. It will pick up more water. So 
There we go. Inside the handle, I just need to remember. There we go. And now we are going to make a dark brown. And I'm going to make that dark brown using the kind of burnt umber color. And I'm not worried if I'm going right over this. Yeah, let's slide that sideways a bit. Right over where that blue was. I'm not worried that I'm using that spot on my plastic palette here. This, like I said, is that cor coral plast, and it works awesome to use as a palette right around your painting. She does talk while she, she does paint while she talks. I try, I try, I try to keep, um, I try to keep moving forward. I'm adding some burnt sienna and burnt umber together, and that's how we get this lovely dark brown. And I might put a little bit of Prussian blue into it to make some darker shadows. So that's how we how we go. Yeah, I I don't know how I learned to be able to talk and paint at the same time. It's uh, I call it one of my superpowers. You know, we all have superpowers, right? We all have something that we can do. You know, I, yes, I can chew gum and walk at the same time. I can even blow bubbles while I'm walking. And I have been known to talk, chew gum and walk at the same time. <laughs> I just made that a little bit darker. It did go up into my, my window frame a little because I was being a little excited. I want to get in there and get that color behind the cup put in. There will be a little bit of some highlight on the table, I think. I think I'm going to do it. You even stop breathing. Yeah, you know, and that's something. Don't hold your breath, guys, when you're painting. Um, or if you are holding your breath when you paint, stop every couple brush strokes and take a really good deep breath and fill your lungs with air because it gives oxygen to your brain and then you can see things more clearly it's really weird but it does it does make a difference so i'm working carefully around that little notepad and the cup the bottom of the book And now you could be writing your next great novel by hand <laughs> in one of these notebooks. You can be doing your morning pages if you like to journal in the morning to set the tone for your day. You could be doing a sketchbook. You could be getting ready to do a whole bunch of doodles on that page. It's all up to you what goes on that paper. I am not, like I said, I am not putting any kind of artwork on the paper of this notebook because I want you to have room to put your own interpretation on it. So let's see. We've got, see how I'm, I am working a little bit darker underneath of the book. like that. And I'm, I just keep going back and picking up some more of the, of that burnt umber color and of the burnt sienna color. They are, and I'm calling them those colors. The colors come with numbers on them. So it would be like C42 and C40 on this palette, but I don't, you know, it's easier for me to call it what I think those colors are. So see, I'm taking a much more concentrated version of it. I'm getting a little bit darker brown down here. The paper is wet, so it's going to bleed out a little. A little bit darker right here. Maybe right along the edge of the notebook the notepad. 
Do you like sticky notes? I like sticky notes on my computer, the, the app, but I'm not really a big... I lose little pieces of paper. I do write on little pieces of paper, but I do lose them. So we've got that shadow of the cup kind of coming in here. It's just a bit of that. Not too, not too specific. I mean, really, I want to darken up around the edge just a little bit. Put a little bit more water on it. Yeah, so I worked with a gal, Amy, who was uh, four foot eight. And she was working in middle school with these boys that are like ginormous giants. <laughs> and she had them under control. Oh my goodness. She could control them. Let's see. I just put my hand in the wet paint down here. You see? I do set my hand on my painting, so I have to be careful. I can watch something and cook. That's about, hey, Tatiana, that is, um, that is a skill to be able, excuse me, to be able to watch and cook. Oh, one of my other superpowers, and you can ask Mark and he'll verify this for you, my husband. I can set something in the oven on a timer and I will walk back in, and this is not just once in a while this is pretty much every single time I set a timer I will just set the timer and walk away and I will get up just whatever I'm doing I will just get up from my chair and walk back into the kitchen to go check on whatever it is and I will do the countdown four three two one and the timer will go off. I'm usually within about 15 seconds of whatever I have set the timer on. It will be about 15 seconds to go left on the timer when I walk back in. No kidding. That is my, my superpower. My superpower. <laughs> so. So. Hello, Maggie. Welcome. Short people unite. Absolutely. I am five foot one and a half, so I'm not, I'm definitely not in the vertically enhanced group. I am. I am a user of step stools. This is kind of like that, um, that sort of m speckled wood that you get. So I'm, I'm, I'm making it up. I'm, I'm going, ooh, well, what will happen if I start touching it now? Many times you start touching it and you do pick up your paint. You're writing your church newsletter. Oh yeah, writing newsletters is a superpower. I have to get better at that. It is a skill that you learn. And I have not learned it. I have a newsletter on my website. But it tends to become a, hey, this is what I'm doing. Sorry, it's been three months since I've sent out a newsletter. <laughs> but uh, if you want, you know, if you click on deliberately-creative.com and... Uh, or deliberately-creative.com, if that makes it easier to understand. Um, it's, uh, you can sign up for my newsletter. It's, it's, you know, sporadic at best. And it tends to be a lot of, hey, this is what I've made recently. This is what I'm doing on my channel. This is what's coming up. And sometimes I will put like an extra little special, you know, coloring page or I'm thinking about maybe putting some little art puzzles or something like that in. Because I'm 
working on some different uh, different books. Oh, it's not released yet, but I do have a new book that's an art materials log book for your studio so that you can keep track of like the um, golden and then you put all of your uh, golden paints, Liquitex, put all your Liquitex, deco art, put all your deco art, um, your different papers and the different size notebooks. And it's a, it's a log book so that you can kind of inventory your supplies and you can flip through it and you know what you have in your studio because I am notorious for going and buying something because I go, oh, that looks really cool. I'll get some of that. And then three days later, putting something else away, I'll go, oh my gosh, I thought that was cool before and I've already bought it. So then I've got two of whatever it is. Yeah, I'm going to pick up a little bit of the Prussian blue now and make that a little bit darker, that brown. So I'm adding some Prussian blue to the burnt umber and burnt sienna. And it's making it a darker brown. I'm going to put a little bit of a line right here. This little space is going to get much darker. I'm going to put a darker shadow right in here. I am working on top of wet paint, so it can lift if I'm not careful. So, you know, you can dry. I probably should dry. But what can I say? I am living dangerously. Living dangerously. Having fun doing it, too. I hope you're having fun. Oh, there. Can you... Uh, can, I could... I can call my wood quilted maple. You know, it's a, um, it could be quilted. It could be figured. Actually, if you want to make kind of a figured maple, you can see the paint is a little bit wet here. If I take my paper towel, it can be like figured maple or it could be like leather. It could be one of those leather blotter type tops. Just right here, just in this edge is all I'm going to do. But look at that. Isn't that fun? I like that. Tech question. Um, so when you type the at symbol and like you say at deliberately creative, I see it as highlighted. You see it as just an at sign with a name. So only the person who you're trying to get the, the attention of, will it show up? So it's probably working. It is probably working. Hey, Tatiana. Yay, thank you. I'm so glad that you're enjoying that texture. I like it. I like that we've got that extra shadow going in around things. We're going to, I'm going to dry it. So, hey, Darcy. Yeah, see, it's real interesting. I'm enjoying doing these little bit longer shows like this because we have a lot of our, a lot of our audience and community seems to come in right about noon. <laughs> so yeah, when you type the at symbol, you don't see it highlighted. Only the person that's receiving it sees it highlighted. No question, Maggie? Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the thumbs up, guys. Remember, type those thumb, click those thumbs up. And the cool thing about thumbs up is that you can hit a thumbs up on every single video that you watch. You know, it's not like that subscribe button that you only get to click once. You get to click the like button whenever it is that you want to do it. Hello, Christine, welcome. Doing some homeschooling with your grandson today, Darcy. You know, I've had a lot of people saying that they're turning this on and using it as a homeschool opportunity with their kids if they want to have them paint. But if they want to have them draw, a lot of people were buying the um, Creative Designs coloring book because it has very simple looking designs, right? That they can have their kids draw 
They can also use these as coloring sheets. You can, um, when you get the downloadable version of it, you can print it out and use it as coloring sheets for your kids that aren't the standard little kid designs. Um, maybe you want, maybe your kiddo wants to do something for grandma to make a card. Or you want to send a, um, you want them to make a card for uh, a cousin for a birthday card. Wouldn't that be a fun birthday card? The, that fun overflowing chocolate peanut butter milkshake or chocolate almond milkshake. So this being a downloadable, you can print it off on whatever paper you want. So you can print it on watercolor paper. This was printed on a sheet of watercolored paper from my, just my office printer. It's a, and people will ask, so I'll tell you, it is a Canon Pixima TS 9520 or 9521. And it will print big paper. So I can print like 13 by 17 in that printer. But this is just eight and a half by 11. So watercolor paper, it's really cool. So there we go. That is one of the ways that you can use that for your kids. You can also use it for yourself. <laughs> so it's not a kid's book, but kids can enjoy using it to make things for their grown-ups. Now I see that I got a little bit of, I, got, <laughs> I dropped hair on here. I got a little bit of the brown up on the windowsill and that's okay because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that wet just like that. And I'm just going to let it sort of flow along the edge now that the paper is dry. And I'm just going to flow that brown color along the edge just a little bit, kind of like it's reflecting back up onto the windowsill or window frame. Boom. And dry it. <laughs> oh, on the iPad, I've never been able to get the at, um, to, to work on my iPad. But, you know, there might be. Um, in the chat, the at symbol, it doesn't just... It, well, actually, it might work. It might be showing it. But it doesn't automatically fill the name as I'm typing. That My Canon Pixima will take the 140 pound watercolor paper. There is a back feed. So say this is the printer right here. And this window right here is has a little flap that goes up the wall and you can put paper in it and it will feed the paper in and it just has a straight shot through. It doesn't have to bend the paper as it comes through. When you put it in the front in the tray, lightweight paper, it picks up the paper and it rolls it and prints it this way coming out. Different ways that printers do stuff. It is the Pixima, P, uh, it's the Canon, C-A-N-O-N, Pixima, P-I-X-I-M-A, I believe. And it's the T-S, Tom Sam, 9521 or 9520, Charlie. So that would be T-S 9521C. And if you click my link for the um, to go to Amazon when you go looking for the printer that helps my Amazon affiliate store and I might well I would earn a small commission if you decided to purchase your printer through Amazon I know that my last time I purchased mine I did it on Amazon and I did click somebody else's affiliate link because it was before I had an Amazon affiliate store I'm going to get my paper wet here and this is going to be a surprising color. I think I want this to be a bright, bright yellow. Or maybe a bright, maybe bright green. Let's go with a bright green. Kind of like highlighter green, right? Look at that. That is like highlighter green. I, ooh, yeah, I like that. 
See, we're just working our way through. You can write notes on your little notepad. Say you are working on that, on that book idea or you're working on something for work. You know, like you were doing a calculation or something. You can do whatever you want. I am going to darken the shadow area underneath of things. I probably should have that, should have had that in front of the plate instead of like under the edge of the plate, but that's what I did. That's what I did. So the post notes, the sticky note, you know, there's brand names out there. I don't want to, I don't want to be saying brand names, but you know, you get, there's, there's different, uh, <laughs> different companies making them. Thank you everyone being here. Awesome artist supporters. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate you guys so much. I'm going to grab a little bit of this other green. Let's see if I can po poke it right there. It's sort of a two down from the one that I just did. I'm going to put that as a bit of a shadow. Just because. That book is over the top. I'm going to put a bit of a shadow here and down that edge. See, we're just laying in some shadows, leaving some spaces with that brighter color so that you've got highlight. Maybe this is more greenish. I'm just going to let that blur out. Wiggle my brush. I'm just wiggling it to sort of blend those colors together. And I can wiggle it here. And I can lift up a little bit. It's like, what? Yeah, see, now you've got a bit of a highlight on that. You've got a bit of a shadow. And we're just using these colors straight from the, the palette, right? Or right from the paint palette right now, right? We're not even, not even really mixing. I'm allowing it to blend and mix on the paper by having the paper wet and just sort of paying attention to where I'm putting my colors. It's giving that idea that maybe that piece of paper is lifted up just a little bit. Just grab a little bit more of the darker green. These types of notes, because they, they do have that sticky edge, and some of them will be stuck down on both sides. I don't see the reason for that, except for there's ones that it's it won't be stuck here, it will be stuck there, and then the next one down, it'll be stuck on this side, so it makes it into a pop-up note. That's a real neon green. Yeah, isn't it fun? <laughs> I love stuff like this, and I love having a surprising color pop in. I just realized that I want to have my tea or coffee in that cup, and I'm actually just going to take some of that brown that we used on the table. And I'm just going to put some of that in here, but I'm going to leave a lot of white because then it feels like it really is sitting in front of the window. It really is getting a lot of highlights from the window and it doesn't It doesn't uh, take much. And you don't have to be real representative with that. See, you can, you can leave some of those, uh, the brown tone in there that's a little bit lighter. I am going to grab just a touch of the Prussian blue. Oh, that's Prussian blue with a little bit of dirt. Oh, let's clean that out. Miss Amy, take care, have fun. Well, actually, Miss Amy, take care. I know you're not gonna go have fun. <laughs> but have fun later today. All right. I care about you. So 
I'm getting a little bit of that sort of gray blue just dabbing it off I'm going to put a bit of that on the inside of the cup here this is a white cup on the inside so ah, ah, ah. that blue is draining down in boom wipe it off I need to be careful with my my colors and not touch the blue to the brown so why is there a shadow there why is the shadow coming around because the cup is sitting here like this and the light is coming this direction so the front edge would actually on the inside of this cup would have a highlight and this back side would be darker see how in my hand see how the inside of my hand is darker that's because I have light coming from this edge like it would be coming from the window and the inside here would be darker so I can put a lot more dark there but the light is starting to catch fuzzy on my ring the light is starting to catch right here as it's coming through the window so that is what I'm doing there I'm gonna actually take and put a little bit darker blue I need to pick up some of that water so I just dried my brush off look at that I'm picking up the water it was a little too puddled a little bit too much of a puddle and now I can go in and get some of that darker blue it's a shadow Oh, that's working really well see so now I want to dry what's here and then put my coffee back in or my my uh, brown liquid in my cup <laughs> there we go I think we're going to have red red glasses I don't think they're gonna be brown or dark I want those glasses to be sassy I am so happy that you guys are enjoying the lessons and that you're learning some things really and truly I'm learning as I'm doing these also I am learning something every time so I'm using the back of my hand to see if it is dry or cold if it's still cold uh, when you touch it with the back of your hand and it's cold that means that it is still wet and um, or you can feel the dampness so you've got you've got both both ways with that I'm picking up some of that brown color that was there I am pressing the pressing the belly the fat part of my brush onto the paper towel to kind of absorb some of the water out of it so that way when I go in here and put my coffee or tea back in I want it to be a little bit more warm brown so I'm just picking up a little more burnt sienna there we go um, it allows the paint to be a little more concentrated the pigment to be a little more concentrated there we go so now we've got the reflection coming through it's bouncing onto the glass onto the uh, the inside edge it's shadow there and a little bit of coffee right here I might even take a smidge of yellow ochre color I'm gonna put it in and then I'm going to just do the the little blot what it does is it stains the paint uh, paint stains the paper just a little bit it just gives you a softer effect we need to get color on the cup and then color on the flowers and the color on the glasses and the pen and we'll be done so first up I want to I'm gonna wipe off that brown see because I'm working in such small amounts right here look at how murky that looked hmm because I'm working in such small amounts I don't mind just wiping away the pigment on that 
And I'm also using very inexpensive watercolors. You know, the, the fan palette of watercolors. It's nice because your colors are already, you know, you've got a lot of variations. You can mix your colors together. I'm going to get a green and a blue. So I want, actually, I'm going to go to this little palette right here, this strip. You can kind of see it. I'm going to grab this green. And I think it's this blue. So it's kind of a phthalo green and a phthalo blue. Mm, look at that. We're making a turquoise color or a teal. I like that. I like that a lot. I could even, let's see. Where's the, there's my gouache. I can even use a little touch of gouache. I'm not going to use it very thick. I'm going to use it um, just to make my painting, my color just a little bit more, a little more opaque. I'm still going to be able to see my, my flowers through it because I'm going to put it on and then I'm going to push it around. So putting it on, I'm not picking up more paint. Well, you know, I might even just paint those flowers in with the white gouache. I think that will work. You know, doing the watercolor with gouache. So if you were ever interested in using gouache to do a painting, let's go ahead and zoom in on that, that area. Let's get it even more even more zoomed in, focused. There we go. So now I am painting in the, the cup and saucer with the, that sort of turquoise teal color mixed with a little bit of white gouache. And that's what I was trying to get to is to say that if you were ever interested in playing with gouache and you didn't want to go and buy a full set of colors, get yourself one tube of white, white gouache. You know, there's, there's a lot of different companies that make it. And right now they don't sell the white by itself on, on Arteza. So if you wanted just a single tube of white gouache, I would check one of the big box art stores and probably go for the um, the Windsor and Newton. Or if you have a Jerry's Artorama, you can get the uh, Turner, Turner gouache. I believe they have a regular and an acrylic gouache. So what I'm doing, getting that color put in on the plate and the cup. And you can kind of sculpt your color in. Look at that. I'm I'm going to say that there's a bit of a highlight right here. So I'm pushing my color away from that area. But then over here, it's going to be darker because the cup is shadowing that, right? So I am going to I'm going to say that the handle is a much lighter color. So I'm just going to add more of the white. I'm just adding more of that white gouache to the handle. It's going to be in the same, same color family, but it's going to be a lot more opaque. So that we can see the handle. And I might do the foot of the cup in this also. It, it gives us a place for a highlight. I'm saying that the light coming through the window is hitting the inside of that handle. The foot of the cup is going to get that color. Tiny touch of, I'm just putting a tiny, tiny touch of water on that just to help it flow. I will make that a little bit darker, but 
To start off with, I want it a light color. There are random highlights that show up in other areas. This could just be a cup that was printed with the with the black and white pattern too. We could do it so that it didn't look like it was I I want to have some color in there. But what I'm doing is I'm lightening that up. I'm saying there might be a bit of a Sorry, I've got a piece of tape at the bottom of my board to keep this from sliding so much. Um, take out some of that water in the brush. So I'm leaning it against here. There we go. I'm going to say that back edge right there is actually going to be glowing a little bit more. I'm going to say this front edge right here has a bit of that highlight glow. I'm going to use the gouache to put the color in on my on my flowers so I can be painting right over everything. I can still see where all my flowers are. And I'm going to take that lighter color much much thicker. All right. So if you are, hey, welcome guys. Those of you who have just been coming in, thank you so much for being here. And make sure and click that like button. Let YouTube know that this is something that they should be sharing with people. I am going to take that very, very carefully on the top edge. See, by doing this, I'm actually cleaning up the top edge of my cup and I'm still using that ginormous brush. I could have gone down to a smaller brush, but if you look at that, that tip is tiny and it fits right in to the space that I want to paint. So there we go. I. Oh gosh, I am just having so much fun doing this. I hope that this is something that you are enjoying. I hope you're finding things to enjoy. I know it's kind of hard sometimes to uh, settle down and, and just choose something and do it. Just picked up some more white gouache, lightening up that front edge that's closest to us because that's where the light is striking the top of the cup. Lights actually strike in the top of the cup at the back here too, but it either has to be way brighter or it has to be darker than that windowsill. Just something to think about. And I'm going to say that the front edge right there on that plate is going to get a bit of light. Hey, Birdie Am! Welcome, Hassy John. Welcome. You went, you came back. You made it back. Thank you. So now we're using a little bit of gouache with our watercolor. See, and I'm just touching a few of those spots and letting it cover over some of that ink. It's giving us a lot of variation. I'm going to put a bright highlight on top of the handle and I'm going to put right back here I'm going to try and say that that's way brighter than that windowsill and right here it's way brighter on the top edge of the cup and then this area down here is going to be darker but it's going to be colored in with the uh, flowers so I'm going to grab let's see first off I'm going to grab an orange and you're gonna go well but you're putting watercolor orange watercolor over a blue color and that is going to make muddy colors right and no it won't because we are doing it with a touch of gouache in it and we're making our little centers. I will put some more gouache out. 
I'm making sort of a bright pastel orange. Just for the centers of the flowers. And now I'm keep, I can still see through. Oh, that's fun, isn't it? That is fun. I'm going to put the same color just as a dot in the center of each of these flowers and then I will dry it. There's one back there. Okay, and then we'll dry and we'll start putting in some color on the actual flowers. So there we go. Yeah, this is a this is a fun type of painting that you know, it looks like a super, super simple little um, sketch in the coloring book or the instant download, but you can keep adding new things to it. I'm sorry, that is, there, the, the autofocus was turned on for some reason. There we go. So we can get this going in pretty teacup. Yeah. Sitting at the coffee shop. We've got our notebook. We're just getting ready to start playing. And now I want to grab a little bit more. Did I throw the did I throw the gouache back down again? Where did I set it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> you know, sometimes I just th set things down. I'm not too worried about the tape lifting up now uh, because I've got all of my background done. Now it's just sort of keeping it from falling. There we go. You have to go. You really love the painting. All right, Midnight McCall, make sure and check back and see what we see what we ended up with. See how it ends up at the end. Ends up at the end? <laughs> Have fun. And yeah, Birdie M, exam. Make sure that you sleep, get good sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. I am going to go ahead and grab some of the magenta tone and get that on here. And I'm going to mix it with the white gouache. And what I think I'm going to try, so I'm going to get this really mixed up and get kind of a thicker version of it. And then I want to grab some See if the white will stick. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Look at that. I picked up some white and the pink. So now I can get these little flowers on here. They don't have to be perfect and they don't have to I'm really going to zoom in on it, guys, and focus. There we go. So you don't have to color in the outline per perfectly. You can just put a dot of color. See? That's just sweet. And I might go back in and put my centers back in again. You can press down a little harder and it will fill more of the, sorry, my hand is right in the way. That one really, that flower really grew. I'm going to have to do the uh, rotating guys. I am sorry. I am going to have to rotate this a little bit. And if you put the point at the center, it makes it easier. So point towards the center dot and if your brush is I have to be careful and not set my hand down in the paint um, if your brush is too wet your paint will sort of bleed out all over the place but look we're just putting little ideas of those flowers in Isn't that fun? 
And because it's gouache, you're able to take those colors right over the top. Even though it's a lighter color and they're not mixing on the on the the painting, are they? They're standing up. They're working as a pretty little pattern. All right, so now the flowers down here. I'm just going to dot, dot, dot. Even though I have a pattern on here, this color going over the top of it just makes it feel a little more special. Okay, um, Birdie Am, just be careful. Sleep well. You're going, you've been studying for your exams you're going to do great just get some good sleep and make sure and eat before you go in if you've got some orange juice or uh, something that you can have right before you go in for your test that helps you know I mean, you're not going in, are you? You're you're doing it on the computer, I hope. I hope you don't have to go into a testing exam location. Oh, there was a little bubble. Sometimes you'll get a little bubble of air from your brush right down onto the onto the paper. You see, I haven't gone back and reloaded this brush. I've just been using all the paint that was in the brush already. Ah, don't want to forget that one little guy back there behind the handle, behind the edge of the cup. Oh, that's fun. That is sweet. Dark chocolate before exams. Oh yeah, dark chocolate is really good right before an exam. I'm gonna dry that. I want to put even brighter centers on these and we might even drop a little bit of color on those leaves now that I'm feeling a little more confident with what we're doing here. Sometimes you have to build your confidence up, right? I like the sketchy quality of the pen lines showing through like on the edges of the paper on that post-it note set. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the reference because, you know, it really is not the reference anymore. <laughs> we totally took this into another, another direction. I am going to go and add bright yellow to my orange that I had on here. and brighten up those centers. See? And if my centers go a little bit big and wonky, I don't care. I'm having fun and making a very sweet, sweet cup. Sweet cup. And this is just one little element of a whole design So there we go. Dark chocolate sounds good afterwards as a treat. Yes. Dark chocolate anytime, guys. Really. I What I like about dark chocolate is that you can have just a tiny piece of it. And it feels like you've really had chocolate. You love coffee and chocolate. Oh, yeah. When I first started drinking coffee, I would only drink coffee that had chocolate in it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit of this white released that was up at the top. It's kind of dried. I'll have to put out a little bit more, maybe, just highlighting those little flower dots. I am fiddling. I am having fun doing it. And if you're having fun, when you are having fun doing it, 
you are telling your brain that this is a good activity. Tell yourself, I'm having fun. Tell yourself, I am enjoying this process. Tell yourself that it's okay to have fun creating. I'm picking up another, uh, some green, and I'm going to see how that green works. Ooh, that green works. I'm just going to put some little brighter green leaves in, just sort of randomly. Where I have lightened up that turquoise, the green looks brighter. Where the turquoise color is darker, the green on top looks darker, doesn't it? It's just because of the optical quality of light passing through those pigments and trying to not have it as opaque. I'm putting little tiny, tiny little viney leaves or little leaves on my vine. And because again, the paper is the plate itself has different tones. It's allowing it to have different tones. It actually activates brain waves. <laughs> I'm talking like I really know what I'm talking about, <laughs> Tatiana. Uh, it does release, um, what is it? It's certain hormones in your brain that give you the, the feeling of contentment and the feeling of being in love. That's why people give chocolate for Valentine's. And it also tells your brain or your brain, it tells your body to go into a little bit more of a relaxed state so that it's easier to remember things. So I'm just putting a little bit more shadow right there under the cup, leaving a little bit of a highlight. I might go like this and put a little bit of a shadow coming up on the flowers just with a touch of that perp that blue look at that now it feels like light is moving around the cup looks like like enamel painted on the oh it looks like the enamel painted cups from Tivana <gasps> ooh thank you that is a really really nice compliment I am going to go in, I'm picking up some more of the white and um, the pink, I mean, and I picked up a little bit more white. I want to give just that little center. Yeah. So the, the little black lines are like your, um, the wire that the enamel is the, um, enamel glass is put inside of. And then they heat it up in a kiln. Yeah, like I know what I'm talking about, right? Um, <laughs> I do have a lot of information about a lot of different types of art processes. Okay, I'm just being fiddly now. I don't have to keep doing anything else to that. I think that is actually, let's zoom way out so we can look at it. Because when you zoom way out on it, Focus, come on, focus, focus, right here, focus. Okay. That is fun. We are going to go and put the, just see, unfortunately I made the paper almost exactly the color of my, my pen body. But I'm going to add some yellow ochre to that orange that's right there. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of this yellow that's up here that has some of the white in it. And I'm just going to make my pen a little bit more orangey yellow brown.
and that bottom edge of it is going to need to be a bit darker. So I'm just going to go and grab, I'm okay. My pen, my, my pan, I don't worry if I have a little bit of gouache when I'm picking up another color because I can wash it off. I am going to go in and zoom in so you can see what I'm doing a little more. I'm going to take my hand, my paper is dry, and I am going to draw right along that edge where I left it white and right over the edge where I painted. And look at that shadow. So now it feels like the light is striking across that pen See, kind of like this. See how there's this darker tone shadow right along here. I don't need to do anything to that pen tip. It's already got that kind of crystally look to it. So I think we're going to dry this and get the glasses in, those eyeglasses. Although, look at that. What did I do? I took my wet brush. And I'm just sort of softening that shadow a little bit more so it feels like it's wrapping around. Just a little bit. I do need to dry it <laughs> or I'm going to put my hand in it. There we go. I like, I really like how that post-it pad or sticky note pad is sh uh, showing up here. I really like that. I think the shadow right here underneath could be a little darker. But I'm going to work on the glasses next. And I think, since I have it on here already, I am going to use the pink. I'm going to make pink glasses, but I'm going to start off by making this a lot darker pink. So I'm going to come over, even though I've got gouache on my brush, I'm just touching my, my little palette right here, grabbing a color. I want more of that pink because I want to make that a darker pink. Mmm, look at that. All right. And I'm going to turn my, my glasses around here, my glasses, turn the Turn the pad around and I've got got that color. I'm going to say that these are sassy, sassy pink glasses. See where my my pen was a little bit heavier and I'm going over it? It's actually making it feel like I've got a good shadow right there. I don't have to color that in as a shadow. I'm going to come along the top edge, leaving some white showing because these glasses, they're the, you know, like the plastic readers, probably they're, they're the cheater type glasses, right? Not necessarily the, your expensive glasses. So they probably have a plastic frame. They're probably plastic lenses too. I want, let's see, that tip. I'm going to go in and paint in the, the arms of these glasses. This is a sketchbook illustration style. So that's why it can be colored like this, because we get that illustrative style going on there. Look at those glasses. We almost don't need to do anything else to them, do we? I might take a little bit lighter pink Maybe just a touch more white. 
So let's see. What are good tags for art videos? You're doing movie art on your channel, but it's hard to get noticed. Ah, uh, you know, there are some really good, look up keyword searches. Look up how to write keywords because keywords are tags. So if you're, if you're looking for good tags, there's also um, tag generators that if you put your keyword in, it will help you come up with tags. I, you know, a lot of getting noticed is actually not even your tags. It's your thumbnails. And I am not necessarily the best person on thumbnails, but there are a lot of people on YouTube that talk about how to make effective thumbnails. So some of the best things, best information about making good thumbnails, uh, good contrast, high contrast is one of the things you need and limit the amount of writing that you have. Make the writing big enough so that if you shrink it down to like the size of a postage stamp, which is, you know, about like that big, um, probably one and a half centimeters by one, you know, by one centimeter, because it's kind of a rectangle shape for your little tiny thumbnails on people's phones, because most people are watching your video from their phone and you only have a second for when they're flipping through those thumbnails to be able to catch their attention. So Ben, yeah, um, working on it. That's, that really is the thing to work on is getting those thumbnails uh, because it is the first chance that you get then asking people to click on that like button, just like I'm going to do right now. Make sure and click the like button, guys, if you are enjoying this video, if you're enjoying the chat, if you're enjoying just hanging out, I'm going to go across now and I'm putting a little bit of a highlight across because what did that do? Boom. That made it have glass in those lenses now. That's all it took to give us that idea. There's a little bit of something shiny there, right? Oh my gosh. You know, I am looking at this. Excellent, Ben. Excellent, Ben. Yeah. I'm more than happy to answer these kinds of questions while we're doing this, just because, you know, it's having, I'm having fun. Okay, so I'm starting my pen up off, off the paper. There's two things that I'm going to do. First thing that I want to do is I want to fix that flower. <laughs> that one flower right there is driving me a little bit nuts. That big, huge one right there. It's driving me a little nuts. So I'm going to go in and put a little outline back on it. Look at that. You can do that. You can put outlines on things after you paint with gouache. Now you want to make sure that it's dry before you start drawing on it. And once you do that, you kind of have to do it to all of them, right? So we're going to be here for another minute. That's okay, right? Look at that. I'm just going to just go in. Kind of outlining. I'm not totally outlining all the way around. But I'm, I'm detailing it. I'm giving it a little bit more detail again. Kind of where it's attached at the base. So if you've been enjoying it, like I said, you click the like button. 
and do that for all of the videos that you watch out there you know um all of the creators that are out there making videos that you are enjoying the only way that they know that you're enjoying it is when you click that like button or you're at the live chat and I set my hand down in the paint so I kind of have to wipe off the paint before I set my hand back down on the painting <laughs> I'm going to just put a little tiny bit of a line on these little ones. I'm not going to, to draw all the way around. I'm just putting like a little separation line between the petals. Maybe on that one around the circle. These are a little bit more in front, so maybe a little bit closer up detail. Okay. Oh, did I do that off screen? I am so sorry. Let's zoom back out. Let's zoom back out so that I don't go off screen again. I want to uh, give this a quick little signature. I'm actually going to sign it under the edge of the book right here. And we're going to be pulling the tape off. <laughs> so let's clear things out of the way. So we can get that fun reveal of the tape coming off. Although, although I say that and then I'm like, oh, hold it a second. I want a tiny touch of white gouache. Oh, I think I've got some right there. I'm going to say there's a bit of a highlight coming around the cup right there. There's a little bit more highlight on the edge of that handle. Right here at the top. I am going to soften that one that I put on right here. And whoops. It was just a little too much. A little too much. Have I painted the kitty already? No, the kitty cat is next week on Tuesday. I'm really excited about the kitty cat, too. There we go. That's making me better, happier. Maybe just a tiny little bit of a reflection down here. A lighter color. Don't do too much. A little bit of a reflection because the... I'm saying the cup isn't sending quite as much shadow out there in the front. And right here under the edge I'm just grabbing a little bit of a kind of a sage green to give me a little bit of a harder shadow right there and a little bit darker shadow right down here under the paper and along this edge just a touch just a touch There we go. All right, we're going to pull that tape off and we're going to see how this how this all ended up looking. Let's zoom out just a little bit more. It's fun to see it all the way colored in. Look at those glasses. Oh wow. There's things in this I am so so tickled by. So I'm going to pull the tape off. We'll take a look at it without the distraction of the extra little paint bits around it. Come on. There we go. I love the window. That turned out so pretty. This whole thing. I'm saying that, that book is kind of tipped up. It might even be resting its corner on the, the edge of that cup. So that's why everything can be a little darker and murkier right there. If you want to paint along with me, I have all 30 Cozy Creative Designs 
available as a digital download so you can download it instantly, have it on your computer, and print out just the images that you want to work on. I have all of the designs. When um, Tatiana was asking about the cat, that one is right here. This is the kitty. This is going to be next Tuesday. This is going to be Monday, the sunflowers. And this is only like, you know, six bucks on, or yeah, I think it's like $6, $5.99 on Teespring. Link over in the chat, link down below in the information box. And it will be up in the iCard after this show is done processing. If you want the coloring book that is pre-printed, you can purchase that from Amazon. Link is down below. And I also have right now on Teespring, we have three, three things for sharing our love. So we have the Creative Hearts Full of Flowers. This is a mini coloring book that you can download and print and then pop it in an envelope and say, here, here's a lovely little thing I was thinking about you. If you don't want to do the coloring book as, on text weight paper, you can print it out on watercolor paper and make a, a little bit more special gift print it out on watercolor paper or cardstock, and then you can give it to someone, or you can do each of the individual cards and paint them. But if you don't want to have to paint all of the designs, but you like the designs and you want to share them, these are all instant downloads off of Teespring on my Teespring store. Inexpensive, and once you download it, you have the right to print it as many times as you want for personal use. I have the six original Doodle Heart designs, and these were all drawn during a mini marathon, and that link is, I will get that linked on here too. And so then you can download and print on cardstock or watercolor paper the painted cards already done. This is a $6 download. There's six cards. So the first time you download and print, they're a dollar a card. But then if you print them again, they're 50 cents a card. And then if you print it again, it's only 25 cents a card, right? Because then you have more copies of it that you can share. These work great as Valentine's. They also work great for showing your love for other people whenever, any time of the year. They are not just Valentine's. So three different products on Teespring just for the lovely doodle hearts and flowers. And the Cozy Creative hand-drawn designs. I also have my digital designs for the 31 winter designs that we did. So yeah, guys, there's all kinds of ways that you can come along with me. And if you download that any of my stuff, there's videos that go with everything that I put up on Teespring. So check the channel out. Make sure that you click that like button. Come back tomorrow or come back on Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific time for another painting. Thank you guys. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again on Monday. Bye-bye. <laughs>